today, Delaware National Guard, and welcome to the July 2016 edition of the DNG News. Liberty Girl, I hope you're wearing your party shoes, because this month you'll need them. You know, Uncle Sam, with the 4th of July, Delaware filled up with travelers, beachgoers, and hopefully all of you. Among many others, Bethany Beach hosted their own celebration. The mayor, Jack Gordon, one of our honorary commanders, kicked off the parade. Once again, Major General Vavila and Mrs. Vavila were there, joined by the 287th Army Band and the 262 Component Repair Company. Well, Lady Liberty, Bethany was not the only place celebrating. Hokusson had their own parade. Brigadier General Dave Deputy was the Grand Marshal, joined by his lovely wife, Florence. Unfortunately, the weather did not hold out for the Dover festivities, and they have been rescheduled for Labor Day weekend. The celebrations over the last month didn't stop there. Each year, Delawareans gather in the city of Newcastle to celebrate Separation Day. The event is a celebration of when the Colonial Assembly proclaimed independence from Great Britain and established a colony in what is now Delaware. Major General Vavila and the 287th Army Band were once again marching in the parade. I hope you all had your flags out waving because it was Flag Day. For those of you who do not know, and shame on you, Flag Day is a day in which all of America comes together to celebrate our nation's flag. This year, an event was held at Legislative Hall in Dover. We had a soldier and an airman present to fold the flag, as Representative Earl Jakes read a narrative about what each fold of the flag represents. Uncle Sam, let's not forget that the Flag Day celebration took place on the Army's 241st birthday. Way to go, Army! Looking good for 241! Well, Liberty Girl, let's try something new this month. You got it, Sammy boy. What'd you have in mind? 90 seconds of trending topics from last month. It was National Best Friend Day. Hopefully you gave your bestie a shout out on social media, or if you're like me, just give your mom a call. The world's ugliest color has been found, and whoa, is it ugly. It's called Pantone 448C, and was the result of an Australian project to encourage people to stop smoking. Why be a princess when you can be a hot dog? A photo of a five-year-old girl named Ainsley went viral after she attended Princess Week for her dance class. While all of her friends were dressed as princesses, she dressed as a hot dog. Thank you, Ainsley, for inspiring us to always be ourselves. Boxing legend Muhammad Ali passed away at age 74. Father's Day came and went. We hope everyone took time to celebrate with their dads. Speaking of dads, here is Major General Vavala with this month's Tag Talk. At the end of June, we hosted a Center of Influence visit for several of our local partners. We opened up the doors of our Air National Guard base and our Army Aviation facility, showing off our mighty C-130s and our UH-60 Blackhawks. Participants were treated to a windshield tour of the base, followed by lunch and a tour of the Army Aviation facility. Following the tours, they boarded a Blackhawk and got a nice ride down to our River Road training site. Here they got to try their hands in the engagement skills trainer, firing M4s in range scenarios, and then on a little turkey hunt. Not only did everyone have a good time, but they also got a first-hand look at some of the great things our soldiers and airmen do. I want to thank all of our partners who attended this event. We appreciate everything you do for the men and women of our Delaware National Guard. While we were busy showing off some of our locations to members of the civilian sector, our facilities office has been working diligently to implement some new changes in all our facilities. Here is Dr. Susan Lewis, our state energy manager, to tell you all about it. Thank you, General Babla. As he said, we have several projects already in the works, like swapping out those dated light bulbs for more efficient LED bulbs and adding solar panels to some locations. On a more personal level, we're also la launching an education program to help you understand what we're doing, 
why we're doing it, and how everyone can contribute to more green and sustainable practices. With that in mind, here are a few things that you can start doing today. First, recycle. Soon there will be posters all around with tips on what can and cannot be recycled. Keep in mind, this is also really useful information for home. Turn off the lights. I know it sounds silly, but it's really important and can produce a lot of energy savings. If you see something that doesn't seem right, let somebody know. If the building's too hot or too cold, if there's a leaky faucet, anything out of the ordinary, please let your building manager know. If they don't know, they can't fix it. All of us can help make our facilities operate as efficiently as possible with as little waste as possible, whether it be trash, wasted energy, wasted water, or wasted money. I look forward to meeting and working with many of you. Feel free to contact me at the number below with questions, comments, or concerns. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, General Vavla, and thank you, Dr. Lewis. Last month, the Medical Detachment held a training exercise to brush up on some of their basic soldier skills and their specific warrior tasks and battle drills. Take a look at this video highlighting their high-speed training. So what we did was, through the week, we went through classroom training on things like map reading, direct, uh, reacting to direct and indirect fire. Um, we went through hand grenade training. Uh, we went through patient assessment, trauma assessments, how to evacuate patients. So we went through individual trainings through the week in both classroom and out in the field. Uh, and then at the end, we culminated that into some sticks training. Unfortunately, because we're the, uh, the medical detachment for the state, our primary responsibility is soldier readiness processing, uh, which incorporates nine to 10 months out of the year. Our primary mission was to, uh, to combine both Army Warrior Task Training with our medical training, uh, training our medics and our, our medical personnel uh, to do both uh, and become competent in both the medical as well as their, as their soldier skills. We got to secure them because there's no straps on this neck. I guess on the other side, so kind of crazy. But it was critical because our unit uh, has opportunities to deploy with with other units and to come in to be backfills and so the expectation is they would understand their job as far as from a, a go to war capability but also we have a requirement for domestic operations support uh, in working with the Air National Guard uh, for domestic operations. So once we went through the classroom training we, we actually created some, uh, some lanes training uh, so we actually had our individuals uh, do uh, exercise their map reading skills, uh, go out to a location, find a patient. Uh, when they got to the patient, they were hit by an NBC attack or they were hit by some direct or indirect fire. They had to respond to that, uh, evaluate the, uh, the, the casualty, and then extract the, uh, the casualty back out within a time frame, back to a casualty collection point, and then uh, move the patient back to the rear. One of the things we'd like to do is to, to train our soldiers to actually be able to do patient assessments, trauma assessments in an austere environment uh, so that uh, as opportunities come up in the state or as situations happen, uh, our soldiers can, can come in and support those, uh, those operations. Overall, I think the training went, uh, went extremely well. It was a crawl, walk, run phase. Uh, in life, sometimes you don't know what you don't know, and so this was to at least baseline them uh, with just some of the basic skills. And uh, we just got through with our after action report review, and we'll be going and identifying ways to increase this training by maybe doing night training next year, maybe in increasing some of the, the patient assessments, um, doing some more evacuation training, and trying to build upon what we don't do very often and, uh, and some of the basic skills that we learned over this annual training. The MedDet wasn't the only unit conducting training. The 261st Signal Brigade and the 198th Signal Battalion had soldiers scattered all over the country, participating in war games at the National Training Site on Fort Irwin in California and providing communication to several sites at WARX on Fort Hunter Liggett, also in California. Both events allowed soldiers to improve the proficiency of their MOS while operating in a complex yet realistic environment. Well, that's all the news we have for this month. Keep doing the great things that you do. And Uncle Sam wants to see you next month.